Hi guys, thanks for stopping on the Pete's Garage. I would like to take a minute or the opportunity to go over something that is very common to all of us, especially guys like me who have been working on engines for 937 years. I always find it interesting and I always stumble across interesting animations or videos or things that show what's going on inside of an engine while it's operating. And why I think it's interesting, even though I work on engines all the time, is because when you get to see what's going on inside of an engine, it helps you understand what could possibly go wrong while it's running. And I get many phone calls, many text messages from people saying, I have a problem, I don't know what it is. And I think this will help everyone uh, to help diagnose what could possibly be going wrong inside your engine or making that noise. You hear a noise, where is it coming from, how do I stop it, what's causing it. And we'll start with this. It's very simple. The four-stroke engine cycle. Four-stroke engines are all the same. It has four cycles. That's why I call it four-stroke. Intake, compression, power, and exhaust. It takes in air and fuel. It compresses it. While it's compressed, it ignites the fuel. The expanding gases from the ignition create the power. And after it's done burning, it exhausts all the exhaust gases. Those are the four basic uh, stro uh, strokes for a four-stroke engine. Now I'm going to show you an animation here of an engine actually operating. We're going to go over the parts and what, how they all work together and I'll show you how an engine runs and what it looks like on the inside and it's really pretty cool because you get to see what happens and it, I think it's going to help you diagnose a problem if you ever do have a problem. So let's go to the computer real quick. Now here is a four-stroke engine. It's a V engine and this happens to be a motorcycle engine and I, you, I'm using this one because you only need to look at two cylinders number one and number two all four stroke engines have the same components or are, are operated using the same uh, f philosophies or same mechanical uh, me mechanical parts. So let's go over the parts real quick then I'll put this in motion okay. First we have a basic engine, you know, your cylinder, cylinder heads, carburetor, everything like that. But let's go over each part. First, you'll have the block, your engine block. The engine block will contain the crankshaft. The crankshaft is often referred to as the backbone of the engine. This is what is connected to the pistons that make the pistons go up and down. The crankshaft turns this reciprocating motion into a rotary motion, to a rotating motion, okay? So you have a reciprocating mass and a rotating mass. The crankshaft is going to be connected somehow to a camshaft. This happens to be connected by a gear. It's usually connected by a chain and a V-twin engine, like a V8, V6, uh, V6 V8. Uh, or if you have an overhead cam, the cams will be over here on top of the valves, and you'll have a long chain driving, a long chain going between the, the uh, crankshaft and the camshaft. You'll have one on each side or one really long one that kind of winds around. So the crankshaft will be connected to the camshaft. The camshaft rotates. When the camshaft rotates, it pushes up on the lifter. This happens to be this lifter right here. There's different color lifters here. The lifter, the lifter is going to push up on a push rod. That push rod is going to push up on a rocker arm. That rocker arm rocks right here in the center. That rocker arm is going to push a valve open. That valve will be the exhaust valve or an intake valve. Okay, so you'll have a camshaft. You have your pistons going up and down in each cylinder here. You'll have a carburetor. Carburetor will be rather, you will have a carburetor. This is mounted in the middle because it's a motorcycle engine, but in place here you'd have your intake manifold with a carburetor on top. Either way, the fuel and air has to get into the cylinder. So you have your air and fuel going into your carburetor through your intake manifold, coming into the cylinder for the combustion and then out for the exhaust. Then you'll have your cylinders. Here's your block with the cylinders. This would be all together if it were regular V6 or V8. And Then you have your cylinder head here. The cylinder head is going to have the valves in it. The valves, the springs, uh, for it, this, will, this is the intake, this is the exhaust. You'll have your spark plug. Uh, and again, if you have overhead cams, the cams would be up here resting on something, pushing down on the valve somehow, but the cam will be either directly pushing on it, they'll be pushing on a rocker arm. Somehow the, the, the camshaft will push down on the uh, lifters if it's an overhead cam. And finally you'll have your exhaust, your exhaust manifold or whatever. But those are the basic parts of the engine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in motion. We're going to talk, I'll put it in motion so you can see it and watch it. But it's interesting to see the four strokes. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. That's how it's going to work. And as we're going through this, I'm going to talk and I'm going to let it run. As, it, as it's running, I'll talk about where you might be hearing noises from and what your problem could possibly be. Let me put this in motion. Okay.
So there we have our engine running. So let me do this side right here because it's, it's easier for me to see. So here we go, ready? Intake, compression, power, exhaust. Intake, compression, power, exhaust. Okay? That's how that works. Now, what problems could you possibly have? First, if you have a problem while your engine is running, first you want to identify when is it happening. Is it happening all the time? Is it a consistent noise, like a knock, 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 like that? Is it happening? Does it speed up as the engine speeds up? So if it happens as the engine speeds up, it's, it's a moving part, okay? Uh, that's where you're trying to identify. Then you want to identify how often it happens. Does it happen if you were able to see the damper? Does it happen every time the engine rotates? Every time it rotates, do you hear it? Or does it happen every other time? Okay. And then you look at your lifters. So you want to identify where your lifters are. Maybe you have a dry lifter. Maybe that's making noise ticking. If you don't have enough oil on your rocker arm here, the clearance or the lash between the rocker arm and the valve could be ticking. Usually when your oil's low or worn out, you hear that tick, 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 tick running. It's usually not enough lubrication between the valve and the rocker arm or the valve and the uh, RFF, which would be in an overhead cam engine. Not getting enough lubrication there, so the little lash, all you hear is the valve slamming shut on the lifter. You hear a tick, 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 tick. So let's talk really quickly about this, this cycle. Intake. You see the blue. The blue is the air and the fuel coming into the cylinder right here. Air and fuel coming in. You see the lifter opening the valve. The valve gets pushed open. Valve's open. 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 So you're letting fuel and air in. And during this cycle right here, this is where you are going to have your air and fuel mixtures. You might be having problem with you're not getting enough air, not enough fuel. Uh, and and this, there's a lot of science involved with the opening and how much you want the valve to open and rocker arm ratios, etc., etc. But regardless of all of that, you still have to have an intake valve that's going to open to let the air and fuel inside the engine. Okay. Once it gets inside the engine, it compresses. That's the purple. Compression. 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 When it compresses, that's your compression ratio right there. How far this, the volume of air and how far it gets compressed to the top dead center. So you have bottom dead center and top dead center, top dead center, top dead center, top dead center. And your timing, or when this plug fires, is how many degrees before top dead center or after top dead center when the spark fires. So your timing, if your timing's off, you could be here knocking from pre-ignition or post-ignition, depending on what it is. If your engine's running hot, the fuel coming, that's fuel that's coming in here, right here on the intake stroke, the, the blue, that could pre-ignite, uh, pre and that's where you get your knocking from, for like knock, 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 when you accelerate, that could be pre-ignition. It also makes it lean, run, makes it run hot, so your fuel pre-ignites. Okay, so spark timing, that's something also. Make sure you have a spark. Does a spark hot enough? Are you getting a spark? If you can't start your engine, first thing to check is are you getting a spark if it's turning over? Then you check, are you getting fuel? That's pretty pretty simple right there. And then the exhaust is is pretty simple. Uh, exhaust, if, if your exhaust valve was closed, you wouldn't be able to start it at all because it, it might get hydro-locked or locked up because you still have everything stuck in the engine. So the first step, I guess, in identifying it is where is the noise coming from? Is it coming from the bottom end of the engine? Is it coming from the top end? Is it coming from more in the center? Is it, does it sound like it's more of a lifter? You know, try and identify where the sound is coming from. Then watch, kind of watch this video and see if you can figure out what makes sense. When is it happening? When are you hearing this noise? When, when could it possibly be making some sort of noise and what is it associated with? And I think this is a pretty cool animation. Even though it's a motorcycle engine, it shows you how the inside of an internal combustion engine, four-stroke engine, works. It's pretty neat. You see here the cam rotating. The cam, the blue lifter, is lift, lifts the blue, which is an exhaust valve, and the red is the intake. Pretty neat, huh? The green is the exhaust. The yellow is the intake on this side. So the cam comes around, pushes up, pushes it up, opens the valve, lets the fuel in. Cam comes around, opens it up, opens the valve, lets the exhaust out. It's pretty neat. So I'm going to let this run, just so you can sit and watch it. I think it's really cool. I always learn something just from watching this, and it's, uh, it's always something... Oh, there is always something to learn. I don't care how many years you've been working on engine. I think animations like this are really neat, and it'll help you out. Whether you have a four-cylinder, six-cylinder, eight-cylinder, it doesn't matter. The, the cycle of a single cylinder is going to be identical no matter what. So you can see what I'm talking about here. The reciprocating motion of the piston is turned into a rotary motion by the crankshaft. That goes into your transmission. Then you have your carburetor here letting the fuel in each side. In place you'd have an intake manifold with a carburetor on top. 
But that's your basic engine cycle. Looks pretty neat. I like that. A lot to be learned from that. So there is your four-stroke engine cycle. I know it's very simple for a lot of you out there who have been working on engines a long time, but for those of you who are new or trying to learn and trying to figure out what could possibly be wrong with your engine, I think that helps out a lot. That's why I'm sharing it. I know it's basic, but I like trying to help everybody, from advanced engine builders to people who are just starting out or trying to learn something about engines. I try and do something for everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. I think that's a really cool animation. When I saw it, I knew I had to share that with everyone because it really is pretty cool. I like watching that kind of stuff. Uh, I remember a long time ago I had a uh, four-stroke single, single engine, uh, single cylinder engine that had a acrylic piston or it had an acrylic uh, cylinder in it. And you can actually watch it in the dark. You can see it firing, but it's not as good as that anim animation because the animation shows everything inside. I hope that helped you out. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll answer them if I can, like I always do. And I appreciate your comments. You guys are great. You guys share some great stuff with everyone. and It really is nice. I appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody you're sharing the information with appreciates it as well. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.